guys, this is The Bastian once again and today I would like to give you a short introduction to Eleventy and Eleventy is um, a static site generator uh, which is fully based on uh, JavaScript um, and uh, this static site generator is uh, gaining more and more popularity and uh, uh, the great thing about Eleventy is that it comes with uh, a zero configuration approach. So it runs out of the box and can handle multiple template uh, languages. So it makes no assumption on the template language you should use for your static site generation process. Instead, it gives you a bunch of options and that comes together with a zero configuration approach so that you can use it really out of the box. But of course, it's flexible enough. If you want, you can include additional configuration and make use of uh, many more uh, of the functionalities which Eleventy t is providing. So I think this project is worth taking a deeper look in and that's what I would like to do today. So have much fun and let's uh, get started with Eleventy. t so first of all, let's take a quick look at the project's website. And the website can be found at 11t.dev and uh, that's it. That's the website and uh, this gives you a brief overview of what 11t is and how you can get started and a link to the documentation here, this big button on this website. Um, and here you can find all the information you do need. However, we would like to start really from scratch and uh, I will use this video, this tutorial today to just get you started with 11T, uh, set up a very basic project and see how you can use templates in 11T, layout templates, standard templates to uh, start the uh, generation process of the static uh, sites because that's that's the purpose of uh, such a tool, a static site generator. It takes template code and then it's generating static sites so that everything which is delivered to the browser is just static content and uh, on the client side it is not needed to execute any framework, uh, any additional code for running your websites. That's all done at development time. Um, server side and then the output is just a bunch of static sites and that is delivered to the browser. And we will see how Eleventy t works and what is needed to get started with it. So, so to get started I have already switched over to the command line and uh, now we need to create a new empty folder. For example name it Eleventy t uh, test like so and then change into that newly created folder, which is of course still empty. And the first thing I need to do here is to initiate this project folder and create uh, a new package.json file because 11t is a JavaScript based framework and um, we are using the node package manager here as the tool for managing our development dependencies. And in order to do so, we need to initialize it, create a package.json file so that this file can then be used for bringing dependencies into. And uh, to create such a file, we can use the npm command, which comes with node.js. So you need to have node.js installed on your system together with that node package manager here so that you then can use npm uh, on the command line here and I will uh, call that command in the following way. npm with option init to create a new package.json file and uh, with option minus um, uh, y so that all the default questions which are popping up when running the npm init command are answered just with yes. Um, it makes it a little bit easier and faster to go through that process. And what you can see here is that the command is now telling me that a new package.json file has been written here and that's the content of that file. So a very basic uh, package.json file, but this is of course a prerequisite then to use npm as our Node.js package manager for managing our dependencies. Great, that's the first step. So then let's use it and let's install the first development dependency and that is the 11t package. 
uh, which is done in the following way. We can now call npm install dash dash save dash dev in order to save it as a development dependency. So it's not a dependency we need when um, when we are accessing this site later in uh, in the browser. It's just a dependency we need here at development time within our project and that's the way how to add it to package.json in the uh, development dependencies section which is then added into that file we will see it later on and then we need to give the name of the package here on the command line and the package name is at 11t written like so slash 11t so let's hit return and let's uh, get it installed. So this uh, now is executing the npm command and it's doing basically two things here. It's downloading this um, uh, package, installing it into the node underscore modules folder, which is a new folder, which is added here into our project folder. And at the same time, it's adding that dependencies into the uh, package.json file as a development dependency. Okay, here we are. So then let's quickly take a look inside that uh, folder and you can see here we have that uh, subfolder node underscore modules. We also have the package.json file listed here. So um, now with that development dependency installed, we can give it a first try and execute the 11t process and uh, this means starting the process of generating static sites and that can be done um, by using the npx command in a, in a very easy way because the npx command gives us the option to execute commands um, just by uh, specifying the package name here it uh, does not require you to for example install 11t globally on your system so that the 11t command is available um, across your uh, system. That is not required because npx can execute uh, those commands from a remote location. Uh, and that is what I would like to show you here. So um, we need to say npx at 11t slash 11t, like so. Um, and there we can execute it and you can see it's uh, running and it's um, finalizing the process in a very short time and it's telling me that uh, zero files have been written and that's quite clear because our project folder is just initialized. There are no template files, no um, uh, no files available which 11t can use to generate static content uh, from. Uh, and that's the reason why the command is running, but no files have been generated. But it gives us already um, an idea of how to run 11t later on. Um, and now our first task here is to actually see some results, uh, which 11t is uh, generating, is to add templates here to our project um, and get something into our project which 11t can use to generate static content um, based on. To add or just before adding template code to our project, let's consult the uh, project's website once more and uh, let's go to the documentation section here and here on the start page on the overview page of 11T's documentation section um, there is one important information because it's telling you that 11T works with multiple template language, which is a very good um, good thing because if you compare it to other static site generators out there, most of those other static site generators come with a predefined JOYS, um, just giving you uh, a template engine you must use to uh, work with that specific static site generator. That is not true for 11t because 11t gives you the choice of just using um, all those template, template languages listed right here. So uh, that is quite, uh, quite a long list here. And you can even, and we will see how that works, you can even combine uh, those template languages. For example, you can define uh, an, um, a layout template 
which we will do later on using the non-jerx template language here and then you can use for all your pages making use of that layout template uh, just to specify uh, the content in markdown um, uh, syntax uh, and combine those two template languages here um, and therefore no configuration is needed because 11t uh, is, is going through all of your files in the project folder and uh, analyzing what template languages are used and then um, uh, then uh, read, going through those files, reading the content and using those template content in the different languages to produce uh, static sites. So, so I have opened up my project folder which we have just created here within Visual Studio Code and throughout this video I will use Visual Studio Code as my code editor because that's uh, that's that's making it really easy to to work with uh, different uh, template languages here but of course you can use any other code editor you may like that's just a suggest suggestion here if you want to use Visual Studio Code you can download it for free for your platform and uh, once it is installed you can open up your project folder here and then start adding some content here and what i would like to do first is to add right here to the project folder um, i would like to um, to add another folder here um, and this folder should uh, be called underscore includes because I will use uh, that folder to then include a file uh, here which is named mylayout.njk um, like so because the first thing I would like to do is to find a layout template. A layout template is a special um, a special kind of template uh, because it defines uh, the overarching layout of multiple sites and uh, so a layout is then used to just for example define uh, things like a header, a footer and uh, so on. So layout elements which should be shared across multiple sites and then when defining those other sites we can refer to that layout and and uh, just tell 11t that this layout should be used and the content coming from the other sites should then be inserted into that layout um, and uh, that's what I would like to do. And to, to define such a layout file, I'm using this underscore includes folder here and the layout, uh, and you can already guess it by the file extension njk, that's what we see before when taking a look at all the template languages which are supported, that's the file extensions, which is indicating that the nunchucks uh, template language should be used here for defining our layout. So, so I will begin with adding a front meta section, which is done in the following way. So three times a dash, uh, and then again, three times a dash. And in between, we can define some front meta data. And this data can be um, used for two purposes. You can bring in configuration options here, or you can just define data uh, properties and, and values. Uh, for those properties which are then used inside that template and that's what I would like to do. I am going to define a property which is called site underscore title uh, like so and I'm assigning the text my first 11t site so that we can later on access site underscore title within our template code and there was include what is assigned here as the value. Great. So then I'm going to continue with adding um, the uh, standard code of any HTML document. So uh, let's define the doc type here, which is HTML. Then let's start by adding an HTML element, setting the line attribute to EM, like so. So within that HTML structure, of course, we have a head element and uh, a body element. Like 
tags. So inside the head, I'm setting uh, some meta tags here. So for example, uh, the first one for uh, setting the character set to UTF-8. And then setting the view port um, by using the content attribute here and defining the width, which is equal to the device width and setting the initial scale, uh, which should be 1.0 here, like so. And then we have a title here in the head section. And uh, for the title, I would like to use the value, which is available here in the front matter uh, property site underscore title. And the way we can now access uh, that that property is by using curly braces, two of them, opening and closing, and inside those um, pair of double curly braces, I'm just using the property name site underscore title, and therewith I'm embedding that value, which is my first element site, right here as the title for the site. Okay. Let's move on um, with body section here. First of all, I would like to have a headline here. So I'm using an H1 element here and the headline should be uh, again, the text which is available in site underscore title. So I can use this expression syntax here once again to access that value and embed it here as the headline. Uh, okay. Uh, then I would like to uh, bring in uh, the content which is coming from the page or the site which is uh, using this layout and uh, we can access this content very easily by uh, once again using double curly braces opening and closing and embedding this content by using the content uh, keyword here like so and because we need to avoid double escaping for uh, what's coming here in with content. I will use uh, a non-jux filter and we can bring it in um, by using uh, the following syntax here. Um, and the filter name is save and apply that save filter here to uh, what's uh, available inside content and uh, what is coming from the child template here. Um, and uh, this is avoiding double escaping. Uh, okay, then let's uh, bring in um, just a separator line here again, and then we can come to the footer section. Uh, I will use a small um, element here to just to bring in some link text. Um, and I'm using here a link which is pointing to my website, coding the smart way. So, and embed this link here. Okay, great. So this is a very easy template using the Nunjax template. Um, language here. That's the reason why we can embed uh, those things here by using double curly braces. Um, and we're using um, a site underscore title, which is coming here from the front matter section. And we're using uh, the content keyword here, which is bringing in the content, which is coming from the child template, which is making use of that layout template. And now, of course, we need to add uh, our child templates, our pages, which are making use of that template to see that really in action. So, and just give you an idea of how you can mix uh, layout template languages here. I will use Markdown for my child templates. And to do so, I will add two new files here to my project. Uh, the first one is post minus uh, 01.md. And uh, the next one is post minus 02.md. So two markdown files and I will start adding 
markdown content here to the first file. First of all, I'm starting again with a front matter section, uh, which can be used in any template here. Um, and to set the layout, so to specify that this side, which is generated based on the post minus 01MD file, should use the my layout dot um, NJK um, file as the layout. Uh, I need to bring in a property which is called layout here to the front matter section and set it to the name of the file. So my layout.njk, that the layout file. And then furthermore, I'm defining a property which is called title here and I set it to my first blog post. And then I'm I'm free to add some content here. First of all, I'm using um, a headline here. Uh, so the markdown syntax of bringing in the headline here. And I would like to access uh, the title value here again. And this is done by using double curly braces once again, uh, like already seen before. And so let's bring in some more content here. Um, this is my first block post have much fun using 11 t uh, an easy and flexible javascript based static site generator uh, okay so that's it let's copy it and uh, let's pass it into uh, the second MD file here and I'm just changing it a little bit so that you can see the effect here the title is my second blog post and uh, the text here is also telling me that this is my second blog post um, like so and with this content edit with layout template edit with my other templates edit here making use of the layout we're now ready to start up 11t again and let it run um, and I can do it from my integrated terminal here as well. So I can open it up by using um, uh, the um, menu item terminal here from within the view menu, which is bringing up this integrated terminal here in Visual Studio Code. It makes it a little bit easier to execute this process. And I'm using NPX once again to uh, start it up. Um, So that was the command I already executed before. Um, and this command is, of course, uh, still working. So I can just execute it here. And uh, now you can see uh, the output is a little bit different. It's telling me that um, two things have been written. So two files in total. And the output, um, and uh, this is just a convention here in 11t, um, is by default put into the folder underscore site. And you can see here you have folders, uh, the po uh, post um, minus zero one folder and the two folder. And in those folders, you can see there is a static HTML file generated an index.html file. So um, that uh, the static content is now available. But before accessing those content, I will just um, show you another option of running that command and uh, that is very useful when developing um, your 11 site and you can supply here another option to the uh, command line which is called uh, dash dash surf and let it run in the so-called hot reloading mode and that is now starting up um, a web server here and you can see it's telling you that you can access uh, it on port 8080 running here on localhost and uh, there is another thing you should uh, observe it is still running so the command is not ending after the static files have been generated it keeps running and uh, the command is now uh, watching for file changes so for example changes in your um, layout templates and, and, and once such a change is recognized uh, the generation process is restarted again and a new output it is produced without needing to uh, start this command another time. So let's see what we are getting here as a result. Um, 
And now, of course, it's opening up localhost port 8080. But, of course, our output is uh, put into two folders here. So we need to uh, just uh, extend this path here a little bit and, for example, access what's been available in post minus zero one folder and here you can see that's the output that's the first static site and now you can see it's a combination it's a combination of things coming from my um, layout template which is this headline here this separator line this separator line and the footer here containing a link to the coding the smart way site and this here is coming from my uh, child template so from the post uh, 01 MD file, which is then inserted here right into the template, right there uh, where we have used the content keyword as a placeholder for the content which is coming from my um, uh, child template. And we can access the second side here as well, and you can see it's changing a little bit here in the content section because now it's a combination of once again my layout, so the layout is shared, same. Um, headline here, same footer, but of course the content is now changed. So that's in, in principle how Eleventy works because that's the very basic functionality. Of course Eleventy is offering many more functions, uh, but now we have a start. Uh, if you find that this, this static site generator is, uh, is interesting and gives you an opportunity of using uh, a very simple JavaScript-based static site generator for you project, it's worth taking a deeper look at and uh, uh, yeah, just uh, set up your own project, try out Eleven T, try out some examples, and you will get used to it and see how flexible it is and how easy to use it is. Uh, so have much fun. So this was Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com. Thanks a lot for watching. If you do like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. If you uh, would like to uh, get access to more tutorials, please take a look at my website, which is available at codingthesmartway.com. And uh, of course, I hope very much to see you in one of my next videos. Until then, have a good time. Stay tuned. Bye.